Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted as always to be joined by my good friend Lee McGregor. Lee, we just spoke a little bit off camera there, man. You spent a lot of time up home with the fat, lovely family. So, how are you finding yeah. things with the, the boxing side and the family life? I know it's been good, Andy. Like you said, this has probably been my my longest, longest we spell back back home. Um since my last fight, I've been in the process of buying my first our first family home. So as you know, it's uh, it's no easy, uh, stressful. It's been a stressful couple of months back and forward. But being a new build, so there's been a lot of delays and mm. things coming up and that. But we're, we're there now and um, we're ready. We should be moving in any day. We've got keys, everything's done. It's just a case of getting it livable. And uh, we're nearly there. And then it'll be, like I said, training. Still kept on training every day. Still smashing it, still fit, still in shape. But it's just been uh, from the the comfort at home and like you say, not not down in London. And it's been nice to be fair. I've been with my daughter, my partner, family, just spending some quality family time as well as still getting some good training. So it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Good stuff. Some well needed rest as well, mate. Which it sounds about right. Like you say, you are training because I do follow you on Instagram. I have seen that you've been at the Iron Will uh, Fitness Gym. I think that's uh, Murrayfield in Edinburgh, around about that area. And then I've seen you sparring with Josh Sanford as well. So you, you're, you've still been ticking over. You, you've not let yourself get fat in any way. No, definitely not. If any, and I've, I've been the complete opposite. It's been, um, I've been for the past probably six weeks or something, I've been, like you said, been in doing strength and conditioning with John Keenan, who's mm -hmm. known uh, working with, with Jason Easton and all that back in the day. And uh, it's just been a, like I said, I've never really done much strength work. Been uh, like we say camp, right? And I've I've been guilty of saying it in the past as well. Um, camp is in London and all things like that. But the way I've seen it from my last fight, I've learned so much. And each each year and in, in my career, I experience more and uh I, I learn new things all the time. Setbacks turn into blessings like all the things that happened with my European title fight falling through and all my, my last fight didn't like didn't go as well as what it could have I still believe obviously of course I thought I won the fight uh, although it wasn't a great performance and uh, I've never no way seen it as a draw but all these things you learn from and and that's what I've, I'm going back to the, the camp situation I'm saying camp in this but I've realised that this boxing game it's no I can't this is a lifestyle and that's why I've now obviously set foundations for up when I am, because I am, I've got a family up here. I live in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. so I'm going to be here a lot of the time as well as I am in Essex, London, training with Ben and that as well. So I've got a, a nice little set up here as well. So I'm keeping on top of everyone while I'm at home. My strength work's getting done every single day, which is something I've massively improved on. And mm -hmm. I can obviously props to John Keenan I've been in there every day with him literally for the last six weeks and then obviously as you know John McCarran Pej my old amateur coaches my brother Connor I'm in doing my boxing with them every day as well and there's good Scottish kids coming through they're always wanting sparring and mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm always here I'm always training I'm always fit I'm always ready and I'm, I'm willing to help anybody out who's who's wanting to get some work and as long as I'm um, in training myself I'll, I'll gladly do so keeps me ticking over, keeps me sharp. And yeah, mate, so like I've just said there, this is a, a lifestyle for me. I've I've really, there's no need for me to have been training as hard as what I have been uh, for the last six weeks with no confirmed fight date. Um, dieting, like being smart, just no, no so much dieting, but you know what I mean? Looking after myself, eating, eating good, training good. That's what I've been doing and I've been enjoying it. And I, I can't wait to, get back to proper work with Ben and and, uh, and the boys and the team down in at Ben's new gym now. But it's been it's been good, mate. It's 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 been nice, like I said, being back home and I'm excited to to see what twenty twenty the the rest of this year brings. I want to kind of go back to that last uh, Diego Rios fight, and you, you, you. I, I, I messaged on Instagram and I said Lee won that fight. For me, you won that fight, but you said yourself it wasn't a great performance. So, can you put a finger on anything that you that was going wasn't going well for you, or anything that went wrong for you in that fight. Do you know what? It was just like I don't even really. I'm not making any excuses. I don't want to make any excuses. It was a, it was a shit night at the office. I, I was probably a bit of complacency there and that again, like the Legrand fight. It's two back to back shit performances, and it's no good enough. And I've learned a lot from it. Although the like 
there was a lot of things going on that I've had a rough couple of years, like I really have, um, but I've still battled through and it's made me who I am today. Obviously, as we know, when I was out in Vegas, the plan was to always have my matchroom co-promotional um, matchroom deal signed uh, and then the fight was to be defending my European title on the matchroom card on the Chisora Parker at the end of December. So I was out in Vegas for all the lead up to that fight for about eight, nine weeks. I come back, I'm not going to lie, from that Legrand fight after that, that was in Belfast in the August. I come back from that fight back into, again, like we're, we're saying camp, but no camp anymore for me. But these are the reasons why it's no camp for me now. Because I come back, I was heavy. I'd gained a lot of weight from that fight. I dropped a lot of weight. Was then obviously ready to fight in December, like we said, out in Vegas. We know what happened with my dad and all that. I had to fly back early. I picked up niggle, a niggle injury over in Vegas. The crap preparation. Still battled through. Obviously needed a little reset and a little rest. Mm-hmm. Kind of done that for a week or two, then I was straight back to London. And then we obviously got that Ruiz fight in, in the February. So, again, it was a long time with a mindset of training, cutting weight, everything like that. And uh, maybe just a bit burnt out by the time the fight came. Um, nobody's fault, probably bar mine, just by no, no giving myself enough time and no living the, the, the full lifestyle, like like I just said to there, using the the camp mindset and mentality nine weeks and eight, eight weeks and mm. nah that's not the case so when I now go back to London it's no I'm no it's no weight loss camp for me it's no any like I'm I'm fit I'm bomb proof fit I'm ready to go it's about working on what we were working on for the the Gurfie fight that was the Lee McGregor that everybody knows mm. and that's the Lee McGregor that's going to come back after this even better even better and I'm excited I've um I've also spoken to my team and we've got we've got some good big plans for the rest of the year. Yeah, I read somewhere that you only stick around at bantamweight if it for a a world title shot. Is that is that correct? Yeah, one hundred percent. I've made that clear. I've done everything I can um at bantamweight. I'm British Commonwealth European champion. I was dying to win that British title outright. I've been champion for nearly three years and I've not been able to get one defence in. A dream of mine was to win that outright and keep that belt and bring that back home, give that to my daughter. I, unfortunately, that I just have to accept that that's never going to happen. Although I can still say, of, of course, I was British champion. And that's no fault of my own that I can't win that outright because I've been willing and ready to defend that for all all opponents, all competitors. And just unfortunately, I was chatting to Robert Smith not that long ago. He's basically said that there's no... Again, I'm probably a victim of my own success. Um basically said that there's nobody good enough or at that level enough that they're going to order to, for me to defend my belt against because I've achieved so much so quickly on in my career. It's, again, like I say, victim of my own success. British Commonwealth, European champion, like I said. So there's no way me... Everybody knows it's tough for me to get down to that way. I've made it clear that there's, that there's one there's one fight there that I'll go back down to that way for because, of, like I've just said to you there, the last six, seven weeks, I've it's opened my eyes and made me realise I can do this. Um, although it is obviously still going to be tough. It's a world title fight will only make, make that happen. And then, if not, we assault the super bantamweight and we, we start chasing world titles at that weight because I know I'm a force at both weights and I'm, I'm there or thereabouts for eliminators. Big fights, that's all we want. Whether it's going to be bantamweight or super bantamweight, we'll wait and see. Lee, when I'm looking at the world title, when the world champions right now at, at Bantamweight, obviously Anui and Donair will be fighting uh, the first week in June. So I'm ruling them yeah. out. So the, the fight that makes sense to me, and if I'm yeah. going to put two and two together and come up with four, is you and Paul Butler, because he's now been promoted. I think Casemiro's been stripped and Paul's been promoted to full champion in that WBO. Is that sort of the angle? Is that the route you're, you're looking oh, at? I would love that. I, I, again, like, you talk about luck, opportunities, things like that. Like, I'm British champion. I'm number one in Britain. Paul Butler number two on Box Rec, but he's a world champion. And my dream, I'm dying to become a multi-weight world champion. That's why I've hung, hung around at Bantamweight. I've, I've been eager and keen to get that shot. I believe I can win a world title at Bantamweight. And that is the fight I want. I've made that clear. Um, although, I'm just not so sure if it's going to happen or not. Um, I I can see and I hear that 
he's potentially maybe just waiting to do the get the winner of that um Inui Dunia potentially probably cash out after that and yeah I, from a selfish point of view it's, it's sickening on my behalf but at the same time respectfully I can understand where he's coming from because he'll be getting a hell of a lot of money and getting beat off Inui or Dunia is certainly um he can take a, a lot more pride away from that than losing to somebody like myself young up and coming probably maybe expect to, half expected to win and then loses, doesn't get paid nowhere near as much money probably. And also um, his pride maybe took took from that as well. Although, however, it's still a big money fight, still a big fight, British, like an all British world title fight. We could have all the belts on the line. Um, although again, I'm, we're in the process, of, I'm probably going to go on and, I'll probably vacate my belts and and we'll um and we'll push on and I again that's what I'm saying because I've got world honors on my on my sites now so whether it like I said whether it be against Paul Butler for the world title or whether we we push on and having an eliminator then push for a world title super bantamweight only time will tell. Uh, uh, looking at the Donair and and, and Anui fight, Anui's talked about moving up as well. And then Donair, if he loses. Does he does he still fight on? Does does he? That's what I mean. Yeah. Who knows? So, he, yeah, it's hard to say a that they, these, they, these belts might become, yeah they they might become vacant. These belts, you you never yeah. know if Anui wins. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 just a waiting game for you, I suppose. It's just yeah. I suppose I'm, that yeah, it's, it's just a waiting game, and it also, like I've said, I can get down to that. I'll, I'll go back down to Bantamweight for a world title fight. I've said that if it's a case of getting back in the ring and maybe campaigning at, at both ways and maybe just getting a, a ranking up at Super Bantamweight to maybe push myself in, in for a shot at that and have, have opportunities at, at both weights and just see whatever one um, makes the most sense. Uh, that's definitely a possibility. We've seen we've seen fighters do that before, so we'll wait and see. But I know for a fact that the, the plans are looking good and I'm in a good place physically, mentally. Everything's, everything's looking good and... Within my my next three fights, I'm confident I'll challenge for a world title potentially this year. But like you say, it could be my next fight if if my uh, dream scenario was to come to fruition. No, that's the thing, Lee. You, you've been in this game long enough now. You know this. Anything oh, can happen in this sport. Yeah. Anything can happen in this game. So you never know. Since we've been talking about, it, give me your thoughts on Anui and Donia then. Yeah, question? again, that's what I mean. It's not one of them where you're like everybody's just to expect like I. You what we seen from the last fight, it was an absolute belter of fight, and it mm. and Daniel gave him real, real problems, and it's a good fight, and and I wouldn't be surprised if Daniel does pull this off, and then it's a case of what happens now. Again, Butler, Daniel fights just as easy to make. They're all easy fights to make, so I don't know. I'm just gonna keep training, keep keep smashing it, and just bide my time, and hopefully I get a little bit. A little bit of luck this time because I've been on the the wrong end of it a lot recently, and I, I feel like I'm due a bit of luck, and and I think I might get it, and I'm confident whatever happens, I'll I'll pull it off no matter what. Again, my mindset: everybody knows me. I'll fight anybody, whether it be Inui, Denea, Paul Butler. It doesn't really matter as long as my team agree with me. Again, I'm not stupid. I know the the most realistic and the the fight that makes the most sense for me is the Paul Butler fight. I'm I'm confident I can win that fight, and then it's a case of we see what happens after that. But if not, we push on and we, we challenge and we and we do we, we the same goal. The same goal applies at Super Bant, mate. The I know yeah well coming from Vegas when we were playing the craps table, you won a quite a lot of money. I've got a photo of you <laughs> chips chips that size, man. So if you were a betting man, who wins the rematch? Inui or Donaire? Inui, aye. My money would be on Inui. All them chips would be on Inui. You remember, you remember um, that you're on that craps table, man? You were doing well. Yeah, you didn't have a clue yeah. what you were doing. <laughs> Yeah, nah, I do, I do think I knew he'll come through that, and then it's a case of what does he do next? Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine he's obviously going to want to become undisputed, isn't he? And then obviously, yeah, it'll probably be. But unless, but I've heard that Bella wants to get a defence in, whilst they two have their fight. So an all British showdown, it makes the most sense. It would sell. He would get as probably financially the 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 most realistic after that fight. Um, it's a big fight and I'm just 
I'm ready. If he's ready, I'm ready. We'll see what happens. Time will tell. WC put a wee post on their Instagram as well. Like they seem to be looking out. What what are your ranking with the WC? Do you know? Yeah, I, I think I'm like I'm in like I'm really like I'm getting there. Like I'm top ten with them all. I'm eight, seven, sixes. So this is what I mean. No ma- whenever any opportunity comes, I'm going to be right in line to get a shot. Um. So yeah, I'm just staying ready. Like I just said there, hopefully a bit of luck comes my way and, and I get a crack, I get a shot. If not, it's fine. I keep cracking on, I keep fighting. And the most important thing is I'm always going to be ready now. I'm staying ready. Whereas that was my, I was guilty for that in the past and I've, I've said this before. And it's just being guilty, using that training camp mindset. I've got eight weeks, I'll be fine. I'm going to camp and I'll get that weight off and I'll be fit, I'll be flying. And it was just starting to catch up on me a wee bit. I think I was getting away with it for a bit. But um, it's a lifestyle now for me and people will see the difference 100%. And talk is cheap, actions speak louder than words. So we'll, um, I'll make sure that, that the actions do we'll do that. Oh, the phone's going to go there. Um, the one final one then. I, I do want to touch on um, our mate Josh Taylor. Oh, there is there. <laughs> yeah. I do want to touch on, on, on Josh. And uh, it seems to be a lot of rumbling between him and Jack. Jack Carroll on Twitter and, and all this sort of stuff, but you know Josh better than anyone. Um, the rematch, you know he he wants that, don't you? Oh, one million percent, one hundred percent. And he's, I think he's he's doing well to to stay quiet from it and, and not really bite or because, like you like you know with the media and all that, you say one thing and it can be everything can just go tits up. So I just think he's doing the right thing. He's in the gym. He's training every day. He's staying silent. He's keeping his business private. He's got his wedding coming up. We all know. I, I think that that's the plan for us all. We're all going to get his wedding done out of the way, and then we push on, and we all have a, a massive end to 2022. And Jack Carroll's the fight the fight he wants. And um, again, another fight that we could potentially share shows. We could do a double header. Uh, Jack, myself, Paul Butler, all pro bellum. Obviously, Josh has got his top rank, and that. I don't know how things are going to work in terms of agreements and that, but. I'm sure all these fights can happen and, and Jack, that that is the fight Josh wants, as we all know. Uh, so I hope he can put that to bed and I'm confident he will. And yeah, like you said, put it to bed. He had an off night and he still walked away with the belt. So put that right, do the job that he knows he can do and that's it. And he moves on and he goes on and does what he what he's always planned to do and become a two-weight world champion. <laughs> Somebody's trying to get a hold of you, Lee. So, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I won't keep you much longer. I do appreciate doing this on, on an evening like this because I know your, your wee daughter's probably running about the house, daft, this bath time and all that sort of stuff. So, Lee, as always, man, looking forward to that fight date. And when you do get a fight date, we'll get a chat again. Hopefully, it's the the fight that you want because obviously you do deserve it. You have won all the belts leading up to a world title, so. Fingers crossed for you, mate. You do deserve a little bit of luck because I know I know your story outside of the ring and what you've been through. So I want my fingers crossed for you, mate. And uh, like I say, thanks so much for doing this Fightful TV, mate. Thanks, Andy. Cheers, my man. I'll speak to you soon, all right? Definitely, brother, man. Stay safe Cheers, and stay mate. Cheers, mate. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.